I'm Ariana Tehran, and this is my final project for Sports and Health Science 502 Motor Learning. Today we're going to be discussing the proper technique when performing a deadlift. This performance will be focusing on the two different styles of feedback that we can provide during the movement. The first one we'll be discussing is knowledge of results, then the second one will be knowledge of performance. It's important that we understand the relationship between the two and we understand when and where these are best used. During the deadlift, when we are focusing knowledge on knowledge of results, what's happening is we're providing a goal, performing the event, and then establishing whether or not that goal was met. So either we did it or we did not. The feedback is then provided after the event is accomplished to make those adjustments for the next attempt. When we are focusing on knowledge of performance, we're providing feedback throughout the process. So for example, we would be going through each phase of freedom, each degree of freedom, if you will, and providing feedback to make sure that we are performing that phase of it correctly. For example, for this type of event, for performing a proper deadlift, what we will do is we will focus on grip and our stance. So that means that providing that we are putting our feet where they need to be and our hands in the proper distance apart from each other. We will be creating spacing between our body and the bar. We will also then create reflex tension during the initial process of the movement between our hamstrings and the posterior chain and our back. And then we will be removing slack from the bar, which allows us to create a safety measure to perform the movement correctly. When this happens, what will happen is that we will make sure that our chest stays up, our back is flat, and our hips are in the same plane as our straightened back. Now that we have the bar in place, we have our standard Olympic size bar, which roughly weighs 45 pounds. And at the end, we have two 25 pound iron, cast iron plates. And at the end of those, we have the grip locks that let the plates remain in, in place during the entire movement. So when we first come up to the bar, what we want to do is have our feet slightly shorter width apart. We want to drive our feet forward underneath the bar to where the bar is located just above midline of the foot. This allows us to have proper motion when performing the movement, as well as creating that plane. Now, when you go to grab the bar, what we want to do is simply just bend straight down, allowing our hips to just draw back, but our thighs to remain tight. We don't want them flexing. Again, straight down. We want our arms just slightly shorter width apart, and just outside of the knees, wrapping our hands around. If you're familiar with the bar, you'll know that there's an early on the bar itself, which will give us a good place to actually place our hands. I like to go just above and just outside of that initial early. When we go to move, we want to bring our shoulders together, which helps remove that slack. Draw the hips down. And when we begin to move up, draw our hips forward until we get just above here. And then our hips right forward, shoulders back. To bring the weight down safely, we'll do the same thing in reverse. Draw our hips backwards, dropping the bar, just before we get to just below knee, straight down. And that is how we would perform the movement. Now, for example, if we were focusing on this movement and only providing knowledge of results, we can simply go through movement and we know I lifted the board, right? So with that, there was no feedback given, nothing changed. I knew that I lifted the bar. Essentially I did my goal. If we were performing this movement and providing a knowledge of performance, similar to giving feedback throughout the entire process, we would then freeze at different motions to make sure that the performer is actually doing it correctly. So if I was providing feedback for a member and performing the motion, if they came to and their feet are too far under the bar, I would say, hey, step your foot back, get roughly two inches between the bar and your shins and the lower portion of your shins. Another one would be when they go to grab the bar, if their back is rounded, so if they go to grab the bar and just as they go to lift, background. We want to correct that while we're freezing the degrees of motion. 
and dropping their shoulders down, bringing their back straight, and their back and their hips into the same plane. That allows us to make smaller adjustments throughout the movement to still accomplish the movement without stopping and possibly risking the chance of injury. So, we're performing the movement. I'm gonna go forward. Right here. We would say, hey, shoulders back. Straight. Throughout the movement, if we start to see this, we want to make sure that we're bringing those shoulders back and letting the performer know. Straight down. And we don't want to see this. What we want to see is that the number is coming down. Back straight, hips down. Just before ending the video, what I'd like to do is demonstrate the exercise from a lot of review. What I will do is perform the movement while talking through it. As we begin, we want to make sure that our feet are roughly shoulder width apart. When we go down, straight down to reach for the water and set our grip, we'll go straight down. This is making sure that when we get close and we bend our knees, that the bar is touching our front shins, our anterior shins. And that's how we know we're in good position. What we're going to do is as we begin to lift the bar, we create reflex tension in our hips, so we or in our hamstrings, and you'll begin to feel that tighten up. And then draw our shoulders together. This removes the side of the bar, dragging our chest straight up, up as it begins to reach the top of the legs, above the knees, stand straight up. Then once we begin the decline or the descent of the movement, we'll start to draw our hips backwards as if we're preparing to sit down. Drop maybe below our knees, dropping, dropping straight down. That allows us to also keep our shoulders back, back straight, hips under tension, and prepare to lift. about demonstrating the proper technique when performing a deadlift. So to recap what we've talked about today in our video is we discussed the comparison and the relationship between knowledge of results and knowledge of performance. Again, knowledge of results is simply conducting the event, completing the exercise, and understanding if you either completed it or you didn't, whether you completed a successful lift or not. Then providing feedback at the end of the lift and then assessing that feedback and utilizing it in the next attempt. Performance feedback is based on each level of freedom and stopping the exercise throughout the motion to give that feedback and then approach the next portion of the exercise after correcting that feedback. This allows us to make smaller, more minor adjustments throughout the exercise and attenuate that information until it lasts longer over the long-term period of that exercise. I appreciate you joining me today. Thank you.